I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about Guy Montgomery's Guy Mont Spelling Bee, which if you love at Tasmas New Zealand, you have to watch this. It is fantastically silly and yeah, it's such a great show. I highly recommend it. So yeah, this video is gonna be me telling you everything I love about Guy Montgomery's Guy Mont Spelling Bee. Um, if you've seen it, then hopefully we can chat about it in the comments, or if you haven't seen it, then hopefully this will persuade you to watch it. It's not gonna be very many spoilers in it. It's not really a spoilery show. Um, but yes, uh, a little bit of backstory. This is a show created by Guy Montgomery, obviously, um, and he was on series two of Taskmaster New Zealand. It was originally created as a lockdown like game that he was doing on which he would live stream onto YouTube. And I, I don't know if it was just YouTube, but that's where I've seen it them be uploaded. Um, so yeah, they're all there on his YouTube channel if you do want to watch them. I personally find it quite interesting to see how the show has evolved um, from these like Zoom versions to the actual TV show. And there is, um, according to Wikipedia, he did do some live shows at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, um, which I haven't been able to find any clips for online. If you have any clips, please let me know because it, it sounds really fun. I think it'd be interesting to see how the show has evolved from the things on Zoom to a live studio to then like an actual TV show. Also with it being the International Comedy Festival in Melbourne, it's not just New Zealand comedians that are on it, it's also Australian and UK comedians. So there's lots of filming ones like I heard Fen Brady was on it, Mark Watson, Ed Gamble. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see clips of that or potentially have them on the show um, at some point. They're, they've definitely been renewed for a second season, which is fantastic. Um, so. Yeah, I'd love to, I think it's really interesting seeing how shows have evolved, particularly with Taskmaster, we saw obviously that evolve from Edinburgh Fringe. The concept of the show is really simple. It is a comedy spelling bee. And I really didn't think he would, like anyone would be able to make a show about a spelling bee this funny and entertaining, but Guy Montgomery has done it. I think he's done an absolutely fantastic job. I love the structure of the show. I think it works very, very well for what he kind of wants to like, sort of drawing out the comedy in people. So we start with the contestants having to choose between three cups, the coward's cup, the person's purse, and the bucket of bravery. I think this is a fantastic way to start the show because it allows the contestants to be introduced individually. They're all choosing their own cup and then they have to spell the question. It also allows Guy to talk to them a little bit um, get their like thoughts on spelling and stuff like that. It's just all, all very, you know, funny, chatty, um, introducing them to the show. And we also get a sense of how each, each contestant might be on the show. They might be overconfident and choose the bucket of bravery. They might play it a bit safe and go for the cowards or the person's purse, or they might have like no faith in their spelling ability and just stick with the coward's cup and not want to venture more than that. And I always find it funny the first um, questions because you know, coward's cup, you kind of think you'll get words like dog or cat, but they are not tricky words, but they're, I would say that they're not kind of what you'd expect when you hear of like, oh, this is a word that a coward, you know, someone who's not very good at spelling would choose to spell. And obviously the bucket of bravery, just, they're just insane words half the time. Um, and yeah, I'm convinced though, at one point Guy is gonna put a very easy word in the bucket of bravery. I don't know why I think, I just feel like that's something he would do. We then have a few rounds in the middle. These are most of the time my favorite. I do love the start, starting round and the finishing round, but the middle ones I think allow Guy to really go wild with his, all of his ideas. So you've got the homophones round, which is hilarious. Always tricking the contestants and yeah, just being so unhelpful. It's just a game of luck about whichever one you choose, which is really funny. You know, the ones where they have to like spell the flags or do things like that. There's loads of different things you can do. Spell like a six year old is possibly my favorite one or, or the audience one. The audience one is good. And then the last round being the buzz round, which is the fast paced round. I think it's really good to end the show with a fast paced, like adrenaline fueled round. Um, I think it's really entertaining seeing the contestants get a bit flustered um, if they accidentally buzz in for a really difficult word or sometimes the buzzers seem to be a bit inconsistent, which is just really fun because you see them getting annoyed. Um, and then like I said, buzzing in for a difficult word and having to spell it. And Guy again, setting up with like, there's just a whole mix of different words like, having to spell was it like NBA was one of them or then really, really long words. Um, and sometimes introducing Maori words, which as somebody who obviously doesn't know much about the Maori language is really interesting and could potentially be really difficult to a contestant who doesn't know anything about Maori. The buzz round also has the rule that if you get a question wrong, then you lose a point. So this 
Um, it introduces the ability for contestants to rise high up in the points or also fall as well. A lot of the time, the winner of the show depends on the final round. I think a lot of the time, the first few rounds don't matter as much because you're only gaining one or two points around, whereas in this round, you could gain like five um, or lose five, depending on how badly you do. Um, and yeah, and I think that is really fun. And the prize is, if you haven't seen it, is you get to play in the next week's round. And if you lose, then you have to go into the dunce's corner and wear the dunce's hat, which I think is a really fun, silly way to end the show. It's really unserious, but it's really funny seeing the contestants who lose uh, wearing the pointy hat. Guy, I think, is a fantastic host of the show. Obviously, it's his show, so he's you can tell he's really proud of it and he really loves doing it, um, which I think is fantastic to see. Um, and yeah, he just seems to be having a great time messing with the contestants. He, in some ways, is a bit like a taskmaster. He's setting the comedians these, uh, like, tasks, these words to spell. Um, but he is also a bit of an antagonist as well because he does try to trick them um, with the, uh, you know, the words being quite difficult or like the clues being of no help to the contestants whatsoever. A lot of the time the, you know, asking for the definition of the word or the country of origin or to use it in a sentence is just a set up for Guy to tell a joke. And I think it's absolutely, I think it's so funny. I really enjoy it. I think every time, I really want the contestants every single time to ask all three of the things that they can because I just find it so hilarious. Um, and a lot, of, they're very clever and very like punny things. So if you're a fan of that, like, you know, silly punny humor, I definitely recommend it. It's, it's really, really, really my cup of tea. Guy uses this game to mess with the contestants a lot, um, which to me creates like a really fun environment because it seems like they're all just a group of friends um, who are just having fun and messing around with each other. A lot of the time I get the impression that Guy is either friends with the contestants or has worked with them before. All, all of the um, Taskmaster New Zealand contestants he was with on the show um, have appeared on it. Same with Paul. Jeremy has not yet appeared on it. Um, but yeah, there's contestants from series one, two, three and four of Taskmaster New Zealand. And hopefully the ones that haven't been it will be in series five or six or whatever, because I think every contestant that they've had on the show has been really, really good. Um, there's not been one that I haven't really enjoyed. But yeah, as I said, Guy really uses that opportunity to mess with the contestants, which not only makes like their spelling more difficult, or, um, you know, it makes it funnier, but it also sets it apart from other quiz shows. A lot of the time the host is either indifferent to whether that contestant wins or loses or is on their side. Whereas with this, he definitely is not on their side to win, which I think is hilarious. He is trying to trip them up. And uh, yeah, I think it's really funny. The obvious example of this is the homophones round, which if you don't know, he gives them a word to spell, for example, which, but he doesn't tell them which which he needs to spell. It's either, you know, W-H-I-C-H or W-I-T-C-H, but you can't, like the, the clues just are no help whatsoever. So a lot of the time it's just 50-50. And it's hilarious seeing the contestants get frustrated. Um, sometimes as well, he will either give one contestant a really difficult word um, or and then the next contestant will have to spell big or whatever. And it's just so funny watching them get annoyed, get frustrated. It's obviously all really like taking really like lightheartedly and in good spirits. It's like everyone just seems to be having a really good time. Um, so yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. The spell like a six-year-old round is... Um, particularly good as well um, because again contestants have to spell the word like a six-year-old would spell it and then they have to uh, they either spell it wrong or they spell it right and if they spell it wrong it's like how wrong do you spell it and I think when you take those clips out of context and you've got a contestant spelling house wrong or something like that it's just really funny I think I watched there's a video I'll link it below it's like I can't remember what it's called it's called like spelling Guy Montgomery's spelling bee is the most unhinged show ever or something like that and it's all just out of context clips it's just insanity I love it so much um but yeah I highly recommend watching that if you're a fan of the show the other round that I think is just mean but genius is the social media round where he gets uh tweets or you know posts that the contestants have made on social media possibly like 10 years ago where they have make, made a spelling error or something like that and then they have to so sometimes he does it differently sometimes he has to correct the spelling or sometimes you have to spell it how 
you spelt it wrong. So it's varied every single time. Um, but yeah, I can't make this video and not talk about Guy Williams' Felice Navid because it it's just so funny. It's not just the misspelling of the word that's funny because he did it, he spelt it terribly wrong the first time and then on the show. Um, it's just the reactions of everybody just in absolute stitches of him spelling the words wrong, him like fighting with the audience. Um, yes, yeah, when the audience are really good at, you know, shouting back at him or um, it's, oh God, it's just so funny. Him just having rants at the audience, just absolutely hilarious. I think this is an example of the audience, you know, working quite well with the show. Um, it sounds like just the audience are having a great time because the studio environment is so fun. Um, but they do engage with the game a bit, like they're sighing when they get something wrong, which then infuriates the contestants because they then know that they, they're they not going to get the points. And I said shouting back and interacting and um, kind of like heckling the contestants if they get something wrong, which I think is quite funny. They don't do it too often as well, which is why when it does happen, it's even funnier. Um, and then participating in the audience name questions where they get to pick, where the contestants have to pick a person out of the crowd and spell their name. This round, every, every single time has been fantastic. There's always one person with a difficult name or a tricky name. And yeah, I think it's just a really great setup for like the spelling because it just great, adds that element of it being personal. Um, they're potentially might be insulting the person if they spell their name wrong. But obviously they don't, ever, like I said, the show is very lighthearted and everything's taken in good humor. Also, there's one round which like genuinely made me a bit anxious, which was the like words that are difficult for a teenager. Um, and we had Pearl back from Taskmaster New Zealand series four. She was in this. Um, but yeah, they had to spell a word. So either the 13 year old or the comedian had to spell the word. And if they spelled it right, then the kid got a prize. If they spelled it wrong, then the kid didn't get a prize, um, which genuinely like how much some of these children were invested in the prize oh god it made me so anxious um and you can tell it made the comedians as well very anxious as um because yeah that was it seemed a bit mean but it was just really funny there is also a co-host on the show called Sanjeet Patel and he is very very funny he brings in like a very awkward energy that's his character um but I think it, he works very very well with Guy, Guy being very silly um, and asking him silly questions and then Sanjeet coming back with very awkward, monotone answers. Um, my favourite thing about Sanjeet as well is even though his main role is to be like kind of revealing the words or the clues to what the words would be, um, he plays with the contestants very well as well. Like he's similar to Guy in that aspect. Like they'll ask him for a hint or a clue and he'll just give a very deadpan answer back. I think he's hilarious. I'd love to see a bit more of him. Normally he's in like one round per episode. Um, but yeah, I think he's hilarious. Like he works with everybody very well. The show is in a very like retro 70s vibe, um, which I really, really like. The style is amazing. Um, I think as well, it's a style that it's almost like familiar to everybody, like no matter what year you were born um, or like, you know, everyone's kind of familiar with that kind of style. It like stands out from all the other kind of game shows or quiz shows that we have on TV as well. It's not very, a lot of the time, the quiz shows, the game shows that we have are very like techie. They have like bright lights and very flashy um, with like, you know, a big prize. Whereas this, it's just like very simple, but like very, very well designed. Um, very simple, but they're just, you know, spelling words out loud. It's just, um, yeah, it's done very, very well. And I think it fits like the actual show very well being a spelling bee. It's a very old game that's kind of been reinvented. So I think taking an old style and adding, you know, twists on it works very well and fits in with that. Another round that was my favorite was the punctuation round, which I think was in the last episode where every single one was a trick. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Just all the little things that he managed to do, the, you know, the double bluff almost with the uh, the, the stickers um, at the end. I just thought it was, oh, it was absolutely fantastic. Like, it's so clever. Cause I went into the show, I like, I knew it would be good because people were talking about it. But I did have that little bit of doubt that um, a spelling bee could be made consistently entertaining and funny because it's something that you've not really thought about as being something you'd watch for comedy. Obviously there are funny moments when you see clips of like real spelling bees, 
but you know, I was thinking, well, like, how, like, week by, like, week by week, like, how are you going to make eight episodes with, like, that's like an hour long and all about spelling? But he's done such a great job of mixing it up, adding twists and tricks, um, and creating, like, a really just fantastically well rounded show. My only slight criticism would be the round that leads into the ad break where they have to, like, either create a new word or something like that. That, for me, is the weakest round. I still find it entertaining, but yeah, that for me is the weakest one, just because it's not really having the contestants spell anything. Um, and while they're able to make it funny, like I thought the one where they had to spell cinema with all the things and people spelt it wrong, um, or the one with the photos was good, where they had to bring in a photo from high school and the person who had the hardest time of it in high school got a point, but that was funny. But I, yeah, the ones where they have to create a word or something like that, not my favorite. I prefer to actually have them doing the spelling rather than creating words. Um, but yeah, that's potentially my only complaint, but again, I still enjoy it. Um, but yeah, that's probably the weakest one in my opinion. Every contestant has been fantastic. There's been then lots of like contestants, as I said, from a Tasmas New Zealand. Um, um, but also there's been loads of other contestants that I haven't known before, but they like are hilarious. And yeah, there's not been one that I haven't liked. The only thing I really wish that they do in the next series is allow the contestants that have been on the show before to come back again. Because with like Taskmaster, it's like you've been on it once, that's your season, you're, you're done. But with this, because they're only in like one episode at a time, I'm really hoping that they can like be in the second season as well. Yeah, I just cannot wait to see what else is in the next season, like whether they're gonna introduce more rounds um, or, um, you know, just stick with the ones that they've got. I Yeah, I'd be interested to see what other kind of words, um, what other kind of rounds they're able to come up with. But yeah, it is a fantastic show. I was able to watch it using a VPN. As I say with shows that you can't like officially watch, um, in your country at the moment as soon as it is brought over if it is um, then watch it there so they get a view that way as well um, but yeah always try and watch it in a way that gives the, the show a view because that helps it get renewed for more seasons um, yeah so let me know what your thoughts are on Guy Montgomery's Guy Wants Spelling Bee if you've seen it um, if you haven't seen it I highly recommend watching it if you can if you enjoyed this video, then please leave it a like. It really helps the channel and subscribe if you want to see more videos to do with TV comedy in general. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.